Welcome to Empowerment Word Church, where we empower people with the Word of God to live, fulfill, and be. Live a life that's pleasing to God. Fulfill the plan of God for your life and be witnesses and ambassadors in the earth for Christ. We are led by pastors Sean and Gwen Edwards. Visit us on the web at empowermentwordchurch.com. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's so good. It's so good to be up here getting ready to finish for the end of the, the year, I guess. Hey, Amen. So excited. We're so excited this morning. What an awesome time of praise and worship. And listen, I know you guys are there watching us online. We chose to do this service online only, give you guys an opportunity to be at home and really having a, a wonderful Christmas weekend, amen. And listen, welcome all of you guys who've joined us online. Hey, I'm, I'm talking to my Empowerment Word Church family. I love y'all. Listen, Lady Gwen and I, we so hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and it was stressless and you enjoyed family and all those wonderful things. And I pray all the children got everything they wanted. Listen, we're so glad that you guys are with us, man. And I pray that the next year be better than the last year, amen. And I even believe this message this morning is going to really encourage us. And by the way, I'm super excited that, you know, we just did our right hand of fellowship. We got new members, man. Come on, we can still celebrate for our new members, amen. You can thumb, you can send hearts. We thank God for our new members, welcoming them to the family. Listen, even in this COVID season, God still was multiplying. And that's what we declared in spite of what was going on around us, that God can still grow you. God can still lift you. God can still multiply you. Amen. And so we see it. He's been multiplying us. Amen. And we're so thankful and grateful for what God is doing, has done this whole year. This is the last Sunday of the year. My, my, my time has flown. It appeared like time came to a screeching halt, right? But God is faithful and God got us through it. And so we made it, and we are on the other side, amen. We preached several months ago, crossing over to the other side, and I really sensed that in the spirit. Empowerment Word Church, we on the other side, hallelujah. Come on, we on the other side. Can you agree with me this morning? We on the other side, hallelujah. And so we're looking forward to 2021. I pray you are looking forward to 2021. I'm excited about what God is doing for the next year as he is launching us into 2021, amen. And I believe there's a word from the Lord, and I've been praying and meditating about, you know, next year, about next year. And I still hear in my spirit that everything is going to be all right, and God is launching us, and he's resetting, amen. And so look, be prepared for 2021. Be prepared, y'all, for 2021, amen. And so listen, guys, we finished our series, uh, which we were doing, called Ten Commandments. Ten, that was like ten lessons, amen. And so... What a powerful series, a life-changing in series. And those were some keys to a peaceful living. And I pray you was blessed by those, those lessons. They were a blessing. But today, somebody say today. I kind of want to share this, what I've heard in the spirit. Amen. And as we finish in the year, this is our last Sunday. I, wanted, I believe God wanted to encourage us and encourage you and let you know, man, that we have a responsibility. We have a part to play, and, and God going to meet us, and he's going to help us. Amen. And so before I jump into the lesson, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to take right on off. Amen. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to stand here and share your word. Oh, God, I believe I'm anointed to teach and to preach your word, and I believe the people that are watching, that are listening, that are all over the world, are anointed to receive your word. Oh God, I declare on today that your word shall fall on good ground and produce a harvest in the lives of the people today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Listen, I'm excited, guys, for next year. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you my prayer is that everybody's still getting comfortable and we soon to get back together, amen. Uh, we'll be open next Sunday, praise the Lord. We praise God for that and we thank God. So I want to turn your attention just to two verses this morning. 
I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. And here's what I heard, and I want to encourage, and I believe God wants to encourage all of us this morning. And I want to title this this morning, Keep the Pace. Hallelujah. That, that, that's how I heard it, I, and, and God wants you to hear it this morning. Keep the pace. Come on and put, put, put that in there for me. Keep the pace. Amen. Keep the pace. As we're getting ready to go into 2021, even as we are finishing the year out, we're, we're, we're finishing it out. God wanted to remind each and every one of you this morning to keep the pace. Keep the pace. That is so important. Because the, the ability to move at the same speed as someone else requires preparation and training. Oh, it requires preparation and training. Most athletes are familiar with the concept of keeping pace, especially those who run track. Some of you used to run track. Some of you are pretty active and been athletes. I got a lot of athletes around here, amen. And so you know something about keeping the pace, amen. But to keep pace is not just for sports. Oh, you got to follow me this morning. It's just not for sports. It can be applied to life. It can be applied to life. It takes discipline. It takes skill, and it, and it takes uh, ability to keep the pace in life. It really does. Because it takes work to manage, to move. It takes work to learn, to change at the same rate or pace or someone else in the same race called life. Man, it takes discipline. It really does. And so God is reminding you this morning as you are finishing the year, God is saying, keep the pace, precious people, because there are so many benefits when you can keep the pace. Where am I going with this? Because you don't get left behind when you're able to keep the pace. You don't get left behind when everybody else is progressing when you can keep the pace. When you can keep the pace. Matter of fact, challenging circumstances don't seem so overwhelming when you can keep the pace. <laughs> they, they don't seem so overwhelming when, when you can keep the pace challenging circumstances. And why do I say that? Because there are other people around you who are experiencing the same thing or who have experienced the same thing. You, they're not overwhelming if you just keep the pace. Keep the pace. Oh, God is reminding us this morning, keep the pace. Matter of fact, destinations and goals that, that seem so far off, the goals that you've set that seem so far off. But if you keep the pace, if you keep the pace, they don't seem so far off. And why do I say that? Because as long as you keep the pace, what you thought was unattainable now are just an arm length away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, 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 are in, they are reachable, amen. If you just keep the pace, there is something about being able to keep the pace. Oh, you got to keep the pace this morning because difficult times and difficult people seem to fall off when we can keep pace. Hallelujah. That's good news, y'all. They, they, I'm talking about difficult times and, and, and difficult people. They seem to fall off when you can keep the pace. And why do I say that? Because sometimes difficult times and difficult people can't keep up with your pace. Hallelujah. They can't keep up with your pace. In other words, uh, your faith is at a great level. Amen. Your faith is at a higher level because this Christian journey, this Christian race, it takes your faith. You got to keep pace, precious people. The enemy is throwing everything at you and at all of us. Matter of fact, he threw everything he had this year to try to get you out of rhythm, to try to get you out the race, to try to get you to start walking, to try to get you distracted and get your mind off of the things that God has called you to do. But God is reminding you this morning, keep the pace. Oh, we got to keep the pace as we're getting ready to launch into 2021. We got to stay steady, amen. We got to keep the pace. We got to keep the pace to run this Christian race. We got to learn how to keep the pace. Oh, that's good to hear. So when I look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, 
The question is, what, what is my part? So, so, so I want to tell you, what is your part in learning how to keep the pace in this Christian race? How do you keep the pace as you're getting ready to enter into 2021? How do you maintain with everything that was thrown at you for 2020, how do you sustain the course of life? How do you stay in the race? How do you keep the pace? I'm talking about with everything around you in your home, how do you keep the pace in your own personal life? How do you keep pace with your children and, and the things that are happening on your job? How do you keep the pace in this economy, amen? How do you keep the pace? Verses 1 and 2 in chapter 12, here's what it said. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so, such great, so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. See, when I saw that in the text, let us run with endurance. Let us run. That there's something that you have to do. And so that's why I got the idea of, I heard, keep the pace because you got to run. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is one of the most stirring passages in Scripture because a passage, this particular passage is written for the purpose of stirring us up and stirring you up to run and to keep on running this Christian life. You got to keep on running. And matter of fact, God is wanting us to take it another level. You got to keep the pace, amen. In this thing called life, in this Christian journey for 2021, you got to keep the pace. You've done extremely well for 2020. The enemy thought he had you out. The enemy thought he was going to get you to walk away from the race. Or it might have felt like you wanted to walk away. It might have felt like you was done. You was done with this Christian walk thing. You was done dealing with whatever you was dealing with. The Lord encouraged and strengthened you. And this morning, he is saying, keep the pace. Oh, this has got to keep the pace. When I think about a Christian race, it's, it's the race for heaven. It's the race for both for life, abundant life, eternal life. It's a race for righteousness and, ju and justice in this earth. It's a race to know God. Yeah, it's a race to commune and fellowship with God, both now and forever. Oh, it's a race. Matter of fact, it's a race to the finish. Some of y'all used to, y'all remember those street races? You get out there, man, you get, get out there with your buddies in the middle of the race, in the middle of the street, and I, I kind of miss them old street races. You know, you get out there and Get all your friends, and you got somebody at the end of the street. They got they they got their hands up like this here, and you just waiting on them to drop them hands so you can take off. Matter of fact, some of y'all before y'all used to race, y'all taking your jacket off, you you taking your shoes. Why do we used to want to run barefooted? What, what was what was that about? I'm talking about running barefooted, man. You can move when you take the shoes off, right? Listen, that that's how we have to be. We got to race to the finish. And so when I look at this particular scripture, and I'm thinking about it, meditating on it, therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, I want to tell you this morning, in order for you to really prepare yourself to keep the pace, you got to choose to be inspired by other believers. You got to choose to be inspired. When I think about this great cloud of witness, I mean, they, they, these are some folks who've gone before us, who've actually, who've done the thing, who journeyed. When I think about the chapter 11, the Hall of Faith chapter, I see all these people in there, man. And, and so I'm reminded that I got to choose to be inspired by other believers. One of the things I, I, I quoted not too long ago, you can either be inspired or intimidated by people that's surrounded by you that are surrounded around you, even, uh, even other believers who are doing extremely well and successful, you can choose to be inspired or intimidated. I'm telling you, if you want to keep the pace, you got to choose to be inspired by other believers. There are some people who have done it. 
There are some people here in the text, man, they, 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 they've already participated, but now if you think about being in a Colosseum, some of the people of old of the Old Testament, they are spectators. They are cheering us on to listen, keep running your race. Keep running your race. You got to make up in your mind, I choose to be inspired. That's what God is saying this morning. Choose to be inspired for your life. Yeah, that's how you're going to keep the pace. Choose to be inspired. And here's another thing. When I think about a cloud of witness and people who've already walked out this journey and called faith, a, a, some people who've already done some things, you know some folks like that. But here's a second thought I want to tell you when I think about that. You need, in order to keep the pace, you need to surround yourself with people whose lives tell you what faith means. Oh, that's good news. You need to surround yourself around people whose who life, I'm talking about their life, tell you what faith means. When I think about here, even in, in chapter 11 of, of Hebrews, I, I think about folks who was in the text, they, they call them, they was in the hall of faith. You see it when it says, by faith, Abel offered God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. I see his name in there. I see by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. I'm talking about some folks who've already done it, whose lives speak to faith. I see where by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Oh, by faith. By faith, I see what Sarah it says, by Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. By faith, these are some people who walk this thing out, who walk this thing out, man. They actually fulfilled it. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. You see all the examples of chapter before. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come by faith. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents by faith. No matter what the circumstances is, it takes faith. And here are some people who've done it. You know some people like that. You ought to surround yourself around folks who their life tells you what faith means. Each and every one of us knows somebody, somebody who has learned how to keep the faith, how to keep the pace in life. Their life, I'm talking about seeing it through somebody who's taken care of their family, raised their family, somebody who started and built business, some, somebody who didn't give up and didn't quit, whose life was committed to God. Each and every one of us knows somebody like that. Surround yourself around people like that. As you go into 2021, listen, you better surround yourself around folks whose life speaks about what faith really means. You need some faith folks around you, not no fake folks. Hallelujah. I hope you caught that. You need some faith folks around you, not F-A-K-E folks, fake folks around you. You don't need any fake people around you in 2021. You don't need no fake folks. You need some faith folks. Surround yourself with some faith folks, and they'll help you keep the pace. Hallelujah. They'll help you keep the pace. They'll help you keep the pace. What's my point when I think about surrounding myself? Surrounding ourselves, these people here, these folks that I named in chapter 11, their faith and their enduring should stir and inspire you to continue and to run your race, man. Here's the third thing when I think about this particular text. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. If you want to learn how to keep the pace, you got to be disciplined. You got to be disciplined. You got to commit to act a certain way, to control yourself. You got to be disciplined. You got to run your race when it says in here, let us run with endurance. There's another translation that says, let us run with perseverance. There's another translation that says, let us run with patience. All those things in life, you need endurance. In order to run this race called life, in order to walk into 2021, you need some endurance, baby. You've been throwing in the towel too soon. Some of y'all will take out and do one lap. Some of y'all have exercised before. You actually do one lap, baby. You're so tired. You're done for the day. No, 2021 is saying you got to endure this race. You got to persevere this race. You got to be have some patience in this race. That's how you have to run. You got to be disciplined. 
you got to be disciplined for this next chapter in your life. God said, keep the pace. And then he says, I got to lay aside. Let us, he give these commandments and these instructions. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance, he says. Here's another thought I want to tell you. You got to lay aside every weight. Oh, it's right in the text. You got to lay aside every weight. Why, Pastor? Because weights have to be removed in order to keep us, to keep the pace. You got to remove some weights. What is it that's holding you down? The Scriptures tells us to lay aside these weights, but, but, it's, but that's not always easy. I understand that. God understands that. That's not always easy because what some of these weights, weights are all excessive affections and concern for the body and all the things that's going on in the world. I mean, having a really strong interest in all this worldly stuff. Man, a lot of this stuff is just dead weight. See, dead weights, they're not, they're not doing anything. Dead weights are not doing anything but pulling you down when you should be going forward. If you have not been able to go forward in 2020, God is saying, listen, you got to get rid of that dead weight so you can move forward so you won't be pulled back but pressing forward. It's time for you to press forward in 2021. You got to keep the pace. Press forward. When I think about all, the, all, all of us who want to seek all this different entertainment, man, for 2021, we got to learn to seek God and spend some time with God and make the things of God a priority. I'm talking about keeping the pace, man. He's got to be a part of your, your program. God has to be a part of your program for 2021. Yes, and he's going to have to. When I think about the Hebrews, the main things that weighed the Hebrews down back in the day was the Levitical system. A bunch of stiff necks, a bunch of stiff legalism. God spoke to Moses and gave him instructions concerning the offerings and sacrifices, the feast and the rituals, rules for everyday life and situations. Those things, man, were very strict. But I think about athletes. Athletes had to strip off some layers of clothes before the race. You ever seen those athletes? They got their sweatsuits on and they take all that stuff off. They take all that stuff off, man, and they take on off. And so we thank God that we are reminded in order to keep the pace, we got we to take off. We got to take off. And so when I see this here, some people, for some people, their garage is a catch-all place <laughs> in their house. Some of y'all got those garages, your catch-all place. It catch all your stuff. You put all your stuff, you put stuff in there when you're not sure about what you want to do with it. You know, I'm going to get to it one day. I'm just going to put it in there. Matter of fact, uh, I got a utility drawer in my kitchen. Some of y'all got that utility drawer. That's got all that stuff in there. You clean it out, seems like every week. All that stuff in there. Listen, we have to remove that stuff because the reality is eventually those places that we have that we keep putting stuff in, it gets cluttered. And so do your spiritual life because if you don't, do a, if you don't clean out some things, your spiritual life will get cluttered and it's going to prevent you from keeping the pace. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get rid of some stuff. I know there's some sentimental value to some of those things, but there were some things that held you back in 2020. There's some things that you gotta let go. There's some stuff that you hadn't seen in a while. You gotta let it go. And here's the fifth thing when I think about this particular text. Not only did he say that we have to uh, put, get rid of some ways, he said we gotta lay aside every sin. Oh, there's that word again, sin. We gotta lay aside every sin. Because sin is a violation of God's will. It is. It's, sin is coming up short. It's missing the mark. It's time out for us to be missing the mark. It's time out for you to be coming up short. How long have you been coming up short? God said, it's time out for you coming up short. You going into 2021. And he said, I want you to keep the pace. I want you to keep the pace. I want you to keep the pace. We got to. I know it's hard to keep the pace. But the reality is, it's difficult to keep the pace when our lives are overwhelmed with sin. See, when we are so occupied with sin, you can't keep the pace. Man, you start, you start out good. You start out running, right? You start out running before you know it, you're walking. Before you know it, you're leaving the church. You, you're walking away from whatever you started doing. That's what they didn't even know. The Lord said, just keep the pace. Just keep the pace. Stay right there. Keep the pace. Don't slow down. Don't allow sin to cause separation. That's what sin does. It, 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 it makes you slow down. It, it causes you to separate. No, you, 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 you got to lay aside every sin. 
Sin gets you out of shape. Oh my God. Sin keeps you unprepared. It does. He said, lay aside every sin. Lay aside. The Apostle Paul told us that all things are lawful, but they're not beneficial. Because the reality is you can be God's child and still be not able to keep the pace. You can be God's child and still can't keep the pace. Because there's two ways in God's system of removing blockage that hinders you from keeping the pace. What are they? I'm glad you asked. There's some things that you can do to remove blockage so you can keep the pace. The first thing I think about, I'm talking about something in our lives that are causing blockage. What is it that's causing blockage? That you can't hear from God. You can't function. You can't hear right. You can't respond right. The first thing I think about in God's system, it's called repentance. Oh, you've heard that word. Repentance is God's system of removing blockage so that we can see a greater manifestation of him in our lives. Do you want to see a greater manifestation of God in your life? He said, listen, we got to repent. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Because the reality is failing to repent prevents you from keeping the pace. When you fail to repent, it prevents you from keeping the pace. It throws you off. You get behind in the things called life. You start wondering what, what is going on around you. Seem like stuff is collapsing. Seem like folks who was way behind you start catching up with you and passing you in life. You're still trying to figure out, you, I, I, I thought I started off with the pack. No, what, what happened was you failed to repent and it caused you to lose your, your rhythm. You couldn't keep the pace which eventually leads to spiritual death. And here's the other system, not only repentance, but this thing called forgiveness. Forgiveness, y'all, is the ability to release others from blame. Release them. The ability to leave the event in God's hands. Some of us got to learn how to just leave that thing in God's hand, and you have to be able to move on. Oh, that's forgiveness. Forgiveness gets prayers through. Where am I going with that? Mark 11 and 25. He's not going to worry about pulling up. It says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, the Bible says, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. That's Mark 11 and 25. Forgive him. Because unforgiveness is a sin. Here we go. It's dead weight. He just told us to lay down every weight and every sin. It's dead weight. Unforgiveness is like a disease. It's dead weight. Unforgiveness, basically, it freezes your life to the time of the incident, and it prevents you from maturing. See, when you're still walking around in unforgiveness, you cannot go into 2021 harvesting a whole lot of unforgiveness because you'll still be immature. That's why some people, even in the church, even in the body of Christ, are easily offended. They are easily hurt. You know why? It's a sign and an indication of immaturity. Oh, I said it. I said it. It's immaturity. Because adults, they have to be maturing, but when you don't forgive, you can be an adult by age, but your mature level will be like an adolescent because you're still stuck with the trauma. You have not decided to move forward and develop because you're walking in unforgiveness. Jesus knew that unforgiveness would slow his pace. Jesus knew that. And his time was approaching. So on to the cross. But before anybody asked Jesus, Jesus forgave them. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. If I, if I, if I son Jesus Christ, man, if, if, if Jesus, God's son, had to, had to forgive folks, how, how, how do you think we ought to do? How should we respond? If Jesus did it, he understood that because if we walk around in unforgiveness, it slows our pace. And God is saying, you got to keep the pace. You got to keep the pace. You got to stay with the crowd. You got to move because life is happening. Things are being thrown at you, and you got to keep the pace. But no, you choose to walk in unforgiveness. You start losing your rhythm, man. And before you know it, people have passed you by by years. God is saying, keep the pace. And here is my last thought when I think about this. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher 
of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here's the thought, last thought I want to tell you. As we end, listen, this is our last Sunday for 2020. And here's a thought. You have to run and finish your race. It's your race. I have my own race. You have your own race. Hey, this is what I heard in the spirit. Stay in your lane. Not only keep your pace, but stay in your lane. For 2021, stop worrying about what's going on in the other lane around you. Stop trying to, trying to imitate what other folks are doing and what other folks are saying. Just stay in your lane. Don't worry about how other people are running their race. Just keep the pace. Just keep the pace. You got to run and finish your own race. You got to run the race. It's a race of service. All the challenges, you got to run that race, man. The challenges coming at you. You got you to keep running. You got to keep the pace, precious people. You got to keep the pace. Keep the pace. Hallelujah. Keep the pace. God is saying today, as we close this year out, he's concerned about you. He's saying, keep the pace. We got help, y'all. See, I love it when you participate in sports. That's one thing about sports, that they always have a coach. Hallelujah. Precious people for 2021, God is saying, listen to your coach. Follow the coach's instructions. Listen to the heavenly coach. Listen, he, 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 sent a, he sent another coach into the earth called the Holy Spirit. Listen to the coach. We got help in word and encouragement in the word. A lot of examples of faithful servants. The Bible talked about a cloud of witness. Surround yourself around some people who got a life that speaks to faith and know what faith means. Pay attention to the coach, man. Don't stop running. Keep the pace. I know life has been challenging for this year, but God is saying, I need some pace keepers for 2021. Keep the pace. This race, we got to run it with patience and perseverance, and we got to endure. Listen, I don't know all the things that's going to happen for 2021. I don't know. But I know God is saying, keep the pace. I'm going to help you. It's interesting that when those athletes run around those tracks, they run around them. And typically you can see your time when you run around those tracks, right? You can see what time, the time of your lap. Sometimes you can hear the coaches shouting at you, encouragement. Sometimes you can hear other team members encouraging you. God is wanting to encourage us this morning. God says, keep the pace, keep running. I understand there's a lot of things that's happened in 2020. There's going to be some things that take place in 2021, but don't worry, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Keep the pace. Keep the pace, y'all. Jesus Christ is our example. Hallelujah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the beginning, the perfecter. He's the rewarder of our faith. Jesus is. He's our inspiration. Je Jesus even had inspiration. Jesus was disciplined. He endured the cross because he saw what was on the other side of the cross. I'm so glad that Jesus endured and he went to the cross and received as a reward and he was exalted. And today we get a chance to partake the true life because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Listen, precious people, God said, keep the pace. Keep the pace, amen. Come on, let's bless God right there. Come on, put your claps in there. Come on, come on, let's bless God. Hallelujah. We're going to keep the pace, amen. Listen, for, your, for all of you guys who is watching us this morning, who are online with us, listen, I, I want to encourage you this morning. If you've never had an opportunity to receive Christ, I want to pray right now. All you have to do is repeat after me. And listen, it's going to change everything for you. Just repeat after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he died on the cross for me. 
and you've raised them from the dead, God, so I can be right with you. Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior, and I thank you today, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, bless God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, somebody got saved. Listen, if you said that prayer and you're watching us online, just, just put in there, put in the comments that you got saved and you received Christ. And, and matter of fact, how about y'all just declare that, Pastor, I'm going to keep the pace for 2021. Just put it there. I'm going to keep the pace. All my pace, all my pace keepers, come on and make some noise. Amen. If, you, if you're going to keep the pace for 2021, you ought to declare that I'm going to keep the pace. I'm going to keep the pace. Amen. And listen, we're going to see the manifestation in our lives because God is faithful. He's faithful. Oh, if he was faithful in 2020, surely he's going to be faithful in 2021. Amen. Amen. I pray you've been blessed by this message. Listen, if this message, if this, if this ministry has been a blessing to you in 2020, thank all of you guys who have been sowing into our ministry financially. Thank you for sowing. I pray that God multiply your seed sown. Amen. And for all those who want to partner to link up with us, please do. You can follow us at empowermentwordchurch.com. If you want to connect with us, hit that contact, fill out that information, and somebody will follow up with you. Amen. Come on and be a part of empowerment. Listen, we're growing and we're going and we're going to keep the pace. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed and I'll see you next week. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today. We hope this message has been a blessing to you. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Empowerment Word Church. You can also view this and other messages from Empowerment Word Church on Facebook and YouTube. If you are blessed by this message and would like to support the ministry, simply go to EmpowermentWordChurch.com and select the Give tab at the top of the page. Remember to live, fulfill, and be and we'll see you next time.